This is a download from the BBC. For more information and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts. Hello, I'm Dan. And I'm Alice. And this is Six Minute English. Today we're talking about shopping. Alice, have you ever gone into a shop to buy one thing and come out with several other things as well? Yes, I have. It happens quite often. And I even bring my own bag and then find I don't have enough space in it when I leave the shop. Because you've just bought so many things? Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, it's quite a common thing, apparently. A lot of people find that they've bought a lot more than they wanted to, and that's often because of the layout of the store. The layout? That's the way that something's arranged. So because the shop is laid out in a certain way, people buy more? That's the theory, yes. The layout of a shop has a large impact on what we buy and how much money we spend. Shops, supermarkets and shopping malls are designed to give shoppers a pleasant experience while they shop. And they use specific colours and lighting and designs to get us to buy more. Shopping malls, that's a very American phrase, Dan. These are the large buildings with lots of shops and restaurants inside them. What we call in Britain shopping centres. And today's question is all about shopping centres, Alice. The South China Mall in China is the world's largest shopping centre. But how many shops does it have? Is it A, 800, B, 1,200, or C, 1,500? Oh, I'll go for the big one. 1,500 shops. OK, we'll see if you're right at the end of the programme. Now, as I mentioned before, the layout of a shop has a direct influence on how we shop. Apparently, if you're in a shopping mall or department store, the more disorientating it is, the longer you're there and the more likely you are to spend. The more disorienting it is. That is, it's very confusing. It's difficult to find things in. And a department store is a large shop with lots of different departments, different areas which sell different types of goods. And if the shopper is confused or disoriented, they're more likely to forget what they came in for and they might start buying more items. It's what's called retail anthropology. Retail anthropology. Well, retail is anything to do with shopping. It means selling goods to the general public. And anthropology is the study of humans and human behaviour. So I suppose retail anthropology is the study of how humans go shopping. That's exactly it, yes. Professor Alan Penn from University College London specialises in designing retail spaces. He says a lot of shops have designed their layouts to encourage us to spend more. Here's a clip of him talking about supermarkets. He says they usually keep essential items such as milk and bread as far away from the entrance as possible. Why do you think this is? The milk and the bread are usually at the far end of the supermarket. That's not by chance. That's in order to get people to travel the full distance through the store. On the way through, they'll see other things that they may have forgotten they needed and put them into the trolley. So, according to Alan Penn there, milk and bread are usually as far away from the entrance as possible, so shoppers have to travel the full length of the store. And on their way, they'll see other items they might like and put them in their trolley. Very clever. What other techniques do shops use to encourage people to spend more, Dan? Ah, now, here's an interesting one. Most supermarkets have the section for fruit and vegetables near the entrance. Why do you think that is, Alice? Mm, I don't know. Does it look nice? Well, let's have a listen to Alan Penn again and we'll see if you're right. Fresh fruit's a very interesting aspect of the supermarket. It's often near the front, near the entrance. It provides you with a very positive, healthy feeling atmosphere as you step in through the door. Well, you were part right there, Alice. Apparently, the fresh fruit provides a positive, healthy atmosphere as you step into the shop. It's more welcoming. So, Alice, it's time to return to today's question. I asked you about the South China Mall, which is the world's largest shopping centre. But how many shops does it have? And I made the guess of 1,500. And you were right. Yes, the answer is 1,500 shops. But here's the interesting part. Most of these shops are empty. In 2008, over 99% of the shops in the South China Mall were unoccupied, which is just bizarre. And there are a few more facts for you about shopping malls. 
Although the South China Mall is the world's largest shopping mall in terms of shops, the largest mall by area is the Dubai Mall, which has over 12 million square feet, which is the size of around 50 football pitches. It's absolutely huge. And also, eight out of the 10 largest shopping malls in the world are in Asia, and there are a lot more mega malls under construction in China and the United Arab Emirates. Wow, those are very, very big malls, mega malls. Exactly. Um, Alice, before we go, could you just remind us of some of the vocabulary we've heard in today's programme? Sure. We had layout, shopping mall, shopping centre, department store, disorienting, retail, anthropology. Thanks, Alice. I hope you've enjoyed today's programme and you'll join us again for more Six Minute English next time. Bye. Bye. That was Six Minute English from BBC Learning English.